looking to start your FM20 career with West Ham and have absolutely no idea where to start. Well, hopefully, this video will help. Hello, the folks. It is TIJ Gang and welcome to my Football Manager 20 team guide for West Ham. In today's 10 or 15 minute video, I'm going to be going through a various number of things in the FM20 game and talk through them and hopefully improve your understanding of those elements in a, uh, to enable you to manage West Ham a little bit better from the outset. So that will include the club vision, uh, transfers in and out, to talk through who's coming in and out of the club, uh, the tactic that I would play with West Ham, looking at the dynamics, development centre, as well as some transfer suggestions in and out. And firstly, we're going to look at the club vision. Now, West Ham are a big club. There's no secret about that. They've only been at the London Stadium a few years. So let's see what uh, the board, the Golds and Karen Brady are saying that yeah, they want you to do in the next few years. So, if you look at the club culture, this is the most important screen, really, if you look at the uh, continuing culture of the club. And now that's not Roy George. <laughs> but anyway, um, a fairly important thing, first off, is that the board don't want you to sign players 30 and over. And that's, that's something I do struggle with, because I'd like bringing in some experience sometimes. But just to bear in mind, they want you to bring in young players. Again, this ties in with this objective, to sign players under the age of 22 for the future. And it's worth noting that these objectives are 2 out of 4 and 3 out of 4. So signing players under the age of 22 is one that is very much desired and pretty important to the club. But one that I think is fairly bizarre is that the club want you to sign high reputation players as well. Now, I don't think there are many players under the age of 22, especially those that aren't that aren't worth a lot of money. And West Ham, let's be fair, they haven't got a bottomless pit of money, although they've got a decent amount at £16 million on their transfer budget. It's fair to say that there aren't many players under the age of 22 that also have a high reputation. So, a bit of a weird one there, but we'll have to see how that continues throughout your save. What I'd suggest is just, is just kind of disregard this a little bit. I'd, I'd focus more on signing the youth players. Um, and definitely not signing those over 30. So really, if my main tip, whenever you're signing anyone, is just to simply do this, not click the striker, uh, just kind of go, right, let's go for players between 22 and 29. And, that, and then you're covered for that, signing anybody under 30. And then, of course, players are under 22, 23, and then maybe go for sort of 17, 18. And that, those are the two parameters you want to look at for players to sign. Uh, but in terms of the five-year plan then, the club want you to work within the wage budget. is isn't really a surprise. They want you to keep the wage budget under control, which seems to be fairly easy at the moment. You've got £200,000 a week spare, so that shouldn't be too much of an issue, in my opinion, to keep that okay. And then there's two cup competitions, of course, which the team is taking part in uh, in the year, which is the FA Cup and the EFL Cup. The, team aren't, uh, the club aren't too bothered about EFL Cup. Reach the fourth round as a minimum, which I believe is the round of 32. Uh, or even the round of 16, actually, if we just check that right. Uh, I think it actually is the round of 16. Yes, it's the round of 16, the fourth round. And then to reach the fifth round of the FA Cup, which I do believe is the round of 16 as well. Yes, that's right. So, that's okay. I don't think that's too bad. But I think I'd probably prioritise the EFL Cup quite highly, because I think for a club like West Ham, European football would be great. And the EFL Cup is probably the easiest way to get into the uh, Europa League. So, I think that would be a good one to, comp uh, to compromise to focus on and also what is required the most important thing above all in all of these competitions is that the team finishes mid-table in the Premier League and you're probably looking somewhere between about 8th and 12th no higher no lower I mean if you think finish higher that's absolutely fantastic but if you finish lower you might have to worry a little bit and over the next few years they want you to challenge for silverware it's probably one of the cup competitions that's obviously not going to be the Premier League I wouldn't say and then to record a Premier League top half finish, the top half again, 10th for above. And then to become recognised as the best of the rest. So they want you to become the best team outside the top six. I think clubs like Leicester, etc. will have something to say about that. But if you invest well, I think that's something that's achievable. It's not too unrealistic. And in the future, just simply continue being recognised as the best of the rest. And actually, you get, you get a three-year contract here at West Ham, which is a big surprise. That most clubs you start at usually only get a one- or two-year contract, which is certainly an interesting one uh, as a new manager. And if we look at the transfers in and out then of West Ham now this season, they've spent £71 million and have had outs of £46.5 uh, million. The big out, of course, being Marco Arnautovic, one of their big players, uh, really one of their main players. But he is 30 years of age, so a good sale, I suppose, for them. Uh, Andy Carroll's also gone on the free. That might be a bit of a problem. Chikorito's also gone to Sevilla, which, again, he was a good player, but ageing as well. Reese Fox Oxford's also left the club. Uh, Adrian's gone to Liverpool for free. That's quite a crucial one, especially at the moment. In real life, we're looking at West Ham struggling quite a bit with their goalkeeping options. 
Uh, and as you can see, they have bought in Roberto from Espanyol on a free, but he's certainly not the best goalkeeper in the world. But their big signing is Sebastian Haller. They've bought him as a new striker. He's 36 million, I believe he was. And uh, as you can see, there's really two main strikers for West Ham. You've got Haller and Ejeti, who is uh, from Switzerland, an 18 million valuation for him. And they also bought him for 8 million for Basel in the Swiss League. Uh, and in terms of other big signings, they bought him Pablo Fournay. Uh, an attacking midfielder and central midfielder from Villarreal for the price of 24 million. So he's a player you might look to use, and certainly looks a decent player at the age of 23. And also fits in, they all really fit in, apart from Roberto, of course, to that philosophy of not buying players over the age of 30 and signing uh, young players for the first team. So let's have a look at the dynamic then that I have used. Sorry, the tactic, not the dynamic. The tactic that I've used uh, for the club. And that is a 4 2 3 1. A kind of positive 4 2 3 1 wide. Really going back to basics, to be honest. Not a not really a style here that's preset because I don't think one of those particularly works for West Ham. But I think passing the ball forward, working into the box, high tempo, counter-attacking football, I think it works. I really do think it works. You've got Fabianski, a solid keeper. Zabaleta, Diop, Balbuena and Mazuaku at the back. I don't think that a centre-back partnership is that great, but is a Diop's 22, has room to improve. Balbuena's 27, to in his prime year. So a decent partnership there and that could even grow in terms of stature. Uh, but I think Zabaleta is on, I mean, he's 34 now. You've got Fredericks who can also apply right right back again. I think in the future he might be one you're looking to use uh, more so. But maybe investment into the right back position wouldn't be a bad thing to do in the future. Um, central midfielders, we've got Declan Rice, which is one of a really good youngster at uh, West Ham. I think you'll struggle to keep hold of him, to be honest, because he is a very good player, one I rate very highly. And you've also got Jack Wilshire in the midfield, again, a very good player. Um, but he's sure to be getting on a bit. He's 27, so in the prime of his career. You've also got Pablo Fournay, of course, who's coming into the club, that 23-year-old uh, that is coming in, who's also on the bench. So you could you could introduce him uh, into the midfield if we can actually find him somewhere. Uh, where is he? Where is he? I think he must be unavailable there at the moment. I don't know where he is. Hello? Where are you? I might just be blind. He might be already playing. I don't know where he is. Where is he? How odd. Pablo Fournay, where are you? Or is he injured? Yes, he's got a twisted ankle at the moment. But obviously, he'd at least be on the bench if he was... Ah, he's there. There we go. Um, if he was fit, he'd probably be on the pitch somewhere round about there. Or maybe even a, an advanced uh, kind of attacking midfielder. As you, as you can see, he's fairly adept at both positions. So that is good to see. A nice versatile player there as well. Uh, on the wings, we've got Yarmolenko and Felipe Anderson. Two decent wingers. You've also got a bit of backup in the likes of uh, Rob Snodgrass, Mikel Antonio. So you've got decent backup there. And I think Antonio is a good player. But 29 again, so a player that's getting on a little bit. Uh, but Yarmolenko... He's in fact 29 as well. So I suppose rotation between those two wouldn't do much, too much harm. And Felipe Anderson is really a star player on the left wing. And of course, you've got Haller, the new signing up front. But you've got Jordan Hugill, who's actually gone out on loan uh, to QPR, it looks like. That's a little bit of an unfortunate one. A bit of backup there. Uh, but Ajeti is the new signing again. He can also play as a pressing forward. And I think with those, those striking options in the attacking midfield of Yarmolenko, Lanzini and Anderson, I think that Haller can work as a pressing forward quite nicely. And I think that would balance out, uh, as I said, quite nicely. I think that uh, it's certainly a decent team, West Ham. And I think if you play them right, if you play right with them, I think you've certainly got a chance for a top half finish. And uh, obviously, you've got Mark Noble, the captain as well, 32 years of age, a good depth player um, who can come in the midfield for either of these two men. And uh, he's certainly a solid player. And certainly got a few more years left on his side, even though he is 32. So let's have a quick look at the dynamics. You've got two team leaders in terms of Mark Noble and Pablo Zetadabletta. Although you've got a bit of a problem because both of these players are admittedly players that are going to retire fairly soon. But I'd say Zabaleta is clearly your main concern. I mean, he's 34 years of age. He hasn't got that long left. Although he's still a decent player. He's probably only got one, maybe two more years left at a stretch. But there are players the likes of Jack Wilshire, Mikel Antonio. I think they will fall in quite nicely. But you will have a bit of a struggle with your team leaders, to be honest. You've got to manage that quite well. Unless players step up to the mark. Because again, Mark Noble, he's 32 years of age. So there should be players that come into that fold. But I suppose you just have to see how you get on with that. He's a bit of a tricky one. And one player I have highlighted that won't necessarily fit into that fold. But talking about central midfielders. Because it's not a position with a lot of depth. I mean, you've got Wilshire, Fournay and Rice. And that's really it. But there is one player who's in the under-23s. So we can have a quick look at him. That's Josh Cullen. And he's 23 years of age. He's on loan at Charleston. He's certainly a decent player. And I think next year you could use him. Of course, now... He is out alone at Charlton and you can't recall him. Uh, certainly for the first 28 days anyway. He can be recalled after 28 days. If you have a, if you have a real problem there, I think that Cullen could come in and be a decent uh, central midfielder. But you have one more screen, of course, to look at in this episode, which is transfer suggestions. Let's have a quick look at who we have suggested. I can't remember who we suggested. 
Um, but I think we've suggested a few right backs. That's something we had to suggest first off because you have got Zabaleta who's aging. And again, you've got Ryan Fredericks there as well. But we'll sort of, Winston Reid is, is, isn't, isn't really even worth talking about there, to be honest. And Fredericks could become a decent right back, but you certainly need depth there. So the three players we could choose from, you've got Nathaniel Klein, who's really out of favour at Liverpool, I think, in the next few months. He could be somebody you could bring in, definitely. But, of course, he's going to be out for this season. So I think it's probably a next season thing that he could come in. And, of course, his contract runs out as well. So Liverpool might sell him cheap coming into the summer. John Joe Kenny's a younger option, which would certainly fit that sign players under the age of 23 or 22 option. But he's on loan from Everton uh, at Schalke. You have to see how he gets on there. Um, but I know that he's not exactly in favour at Everton. So you might have to see how he gets on. If you can sign him again at the end of the season, that would be awesome. But if you need a bit more of, a, of an immediate option, I think Kevin Malquitt would fit that very nicely. A Napoli player who's been there for a few years. Only one year, actually. Got plenty of European experience. If we compare him to Ryan Fredericks, uh, he's certainly not a bad player at all. There we go. There's Ryan Fredericks. As you can see, Matt, Kevin Malquitt, he's a decent player. Certainly is. He hasn't got the speed of Ryan Fredericks, but certainly he's a decent player, and you could probably bring him in for about £10 million. I don't think that would be the worst investment in the world at the age of 27. And then as you saw as well, we've got two strikers, but not the most striking depth in the world as well. I think Jack Marriott would be good there. He's a good championship striker. I think could make the, he could make the mark in the Premier League, but uh, you might be you might struggle to get him away from Derby County to, for a price that's probably 10 or £15 million. Then you've got Rian Brewster, who could be a good option from Liverpool. Certainly as a loan option anyway. Uh, not the best player in the world, but I think a bit of Premier League experience. Now, I am a Liverpool fan myself, so I do like Rian Brewster. And I think he'll gain some good first team experience at West Ham. And who knows, you might be able to sign him. He's certainly a decent player um, and could improve further. I think he'd be a good depth player at least for the team. And then a former Premier League player who's got experience at Leicester, Ahmed Moussa. Uh, you could certainly sign him, I think. Um, he's from Saudi Arabia. He's actually gone to... Al Nasser for 14.75 million. But he's a player that I think you could get, especially in January if you look to inquire for him. He's got good um, left wing ability as well. But as a striker, I think he'd be pretty good. But uh, I think Rian Bruce is probably the best choice out of them all, uh, realistically. And then probably Malquit or Klein out of those three suggestions. But just putting a few suggestions out there um, for you guys to choose from. But of course, if you've got any suggestions of your own, please free to, feel free to leave them down in the comments. I've only really got a limited time to look at suggestions. So. I think with a few hours, I could probably come up with something a little bit better. But uh, this is an important screen, which I say in every team guide. It's a massively important screen in the development centre that you definitely need to focus on this year because it shows your first team candidates. That's the reason I picked up Josh Cullen in the end of 23 squad. You've also got Grady uh, De, De, uh, Dianjana. Diangana, not really sure. He's on loan at West Brom. It doesn't look too bad to come into the first team. But this screen, of course, will update throughout your career. And uh, update you about players that can come into the squad. I'm sure if you buy young players, they'll go into the under-23s at first. And you can check their progress here. You can look at players out on loan as well. Uh, and, of course, look at your under-23s and under-18 squad. And see who's got potential. I mean, you look at Cardo. So, looks a very, a very, very, very good centre-back. Uh, Sean Adarqua. They've got a very good youth system here at West Ham. Um, so, if you do get a few years into your save, I'd be interested to see if there are any players that you, uh, that you develop to be very good players that come through the youth system. Of course, that does meet the club vision as well of developing players using the club's youth system. Uh, but that's going to be it for today's team guide. A quick uh, summary, really, of West Ham uh, in a 10-15 minute period. If you did enjoy that and found it beneficial, please make sure you leave a like on this video. It really increases the support for this video and for the other team guides with other teams in the Premier League. And if you want to see a team guide for another team in the Premier League, make sure to go and check out the playlist, which has got all the FM20 team guides in for all the Premier League teams. But if you've enjoyed that, as I, make sure, as I said, make sure to leave a like. Comment down below with your opinions on West Ham, how you think they'll get on in the Premier League this year. And most importantly, how you're getting on in your West Ham save. And subscribe for regular FM20 content as well. That's, that's the most important thing above anything else. But thank you very much for your company today. And as I said, I hope you found this beneficial. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye for now.